Ladies and gentlemen, Barry Boswick. Thanks for coming out on a it's Friday, right? Yeah, Friday afternoon. Uh, here, I'm going to do something. Uh, when it comes to the questions and answers, uh, the best question that is. Supposedly, I can hear you. Now it's on. It's like I've never used a microphone before. You know, it's just weird. It's a learning curve. I, so I, I could continue what I, what I was saying. I was, and so the best question is get, gets a choice of a picture. You either get a picture from, a signed picture from Rocky Horror, but not you. But you, of course, could have it. Or, <clears throat> or a, a, a signed picture from uh, Megaforce, which is a movie that three of you know. Uh, and you, yes, in the back, you better be, come up with a good question, and this one will be yours. Deeds, not words, is the moniker Excellent. for the movie. Um, uh, thank you. That's it. Uh, and you have a question? I suppose so. I can Why? think of a few. Okay. Right. <clears throat> well, first of all, uh, obviously, uh, can you hear me? No, I can't, yeah. Now? Okay, there we go. Um, yep. Obviously, we know you from your singing from Rocky Horror, but I wanted to ask you about something you did before that even. Uh, you were in a pop group. Pop. I was in a pop group called The Clowns yes. with a K. <laughs> you can get the record on eBay for $2.98. <laughs> uh, we, had a, we, had a song, uh, we had a song that was uh, on the charts, actually. Uh, it's like, it was like... 30-something, yeah. uh, with a bullet. Yes. But the bullet was going down. It was. Yeah, it wasn't Sadly. going up. Yeah, yes. yeah. It's <laughs> called Lady Love, uh, and I was the lead singer in this group called The Clowns. And we were put together as, uh, sort of like the monkeys. We were like a pop group, and um, uh, we were put together by Ringling Brothers Barnum & Bailey Circus. And... Uh, we did a, a pilot for a one-hour uh, TV show where they'd use some of the circus acts and actors or, or stars who were sort of uh, also were part of the show. And uh, the show wasn't picked up, and we only did one album. Uh, and it's called The Clowns with a K. And uh, uh, $2.95. <laughs> You can you can get them worth at least that at least that yeah and actually the music's pretty damn good yes, I must I must say have you heard any yeah, of so it? Yes, there's some on YouTube if you want to go uh, do a search on there you'll find some. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, okay. Um, well, as far as uh, beyond the clowns, uh, you made your way to Broadway uh, not so long after that, I think. Uh, a year yeah, or two, I think. Yeah, 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 probably that was what in the '60s or something. Or? Yeah, late '69, I believe. Well, okay. <laughs> But when you actually got uh, to New York, I believe your uh, Ellis Rab was the one who kind of showed you the, the ropes. Ellis Rab, yeah. How would you? you Ellis Rab is a, a very famous there. director in New York uh, with the APA Phoenix Repertory Company. I was with them right after school, college. I went to NYU School of the Arts, and uh, uh, I was a journeyman with their group, with with the repertory company, and they had a Broadway season. I did my first Broadway show with them uh, called uh, Cockadoodle Dandy, <laughs> and I played, uh, of course, the cock. Um, and um, it was a it was a mimed kind of part. Uh, I actually was dressed up like a very large rooster, um, and uh, that was my uh, uh, my uh, my beginning of my Broadway career. And then I had a bunch of other shows and stuff. And you. Rather famously uh, originated the role of Danny Zuko in Greece. Z Greece, yes, in 1971, something like that. Yeah, Danny Zuko, um, uh, and uh, Travolta was in the touring company with me. After that, he he was playing Duty, and uh, and um, and he stole all of my good stuff. <laughs> you know, 
but a sweet guy, and he was really good in the movie, and he was very... It, that movie probably wouldn't have been made if John hadn't decided to do it at the time. He was such a huge star, yeah. you know, when it first, right about that time. And um, um, he was um, he was just, what a charming guy. What a charming, nice guy, you know. I, I never regretted his career one bit, you know. I, I, I have not, uh, I've never thought that he uh, didn't deserve it. Um, <laughs> You know, he didn't deserve some of the things in Greece that I did, <laughs> but uh, uh, he was, uh, he was, no, he was great. He was great. <laughs> Greece, that's right. That, uh, yeah. We did it uh, with, um, we just had our 50th anniversary. Wow, nice. Yeah, and there's a book I have at, at my table. There was a book that was just been written uh, by the director and uh, uh, the producer at, uh, called uh, "Tell Me More, Tell Me More," and it's all about the whole, the whole beginnings of Greece and the first uh, casts and and some of the subsequent casts that did the first touring companies and stuff and his personal stories and it it was quite a journey. Greece, uh, it, it was not a huge hit. It was sort of like Rocky Horror. It wasn't a huge hit when it first came out, you know. Yeah. But it just it just gathered a following because of its. It was cool, huh? you know. It's cool. So how did you ease your way from the stage onto the screen? Uh, eased. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, uh, we all I, we all had the same manager at the time, a guy named Bob Lamont, Travolta, Swayze, myself, uh, Treat Williams, uh, a bunch of other guys. And we all sort of left New York at the same time and went to California uh, because that's where he wanted to, the manager wanted to sort of set up shop. And um, um, and so I went out to California and did a pilot uh, called Slither based on a movie that uh, called Slither. Uh, well, it, it James Conn, I think. It was never picked, what's that? James Conn was in the film. James right? Conn yeah. was in the film. I played yeah. the James Conn part, you know, not, I'm, I'm nothing like James <laughs> Conn, unfortunately, and that's probably why the, it didn't work, you know. Just, but um, it, it was, um, yeah, Slither. So that's what we all did. We all just sort of went out there, and Bob Lamont, the manager, was going to uh, make uh, stars uh, of all of us, you know. And uh, uh, once um, John Kit hit, yeah. he really hit, you know. I mean, he hit fast with, with uh, Welcome Back, Cotter, and all that. And, uh, boy, he took off so fast. And then Swayze and, and, and Jeff Conaway was, was part of that group, too, you know. Yeah, that's, 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 and then I just sort of stuck around. I would go back and <laughs> forth between L.A. and New York and L.A. and New York and uh, stayed doing the stage stuff, mostly during the 70s, mm. you know. What was the, uh, the process of getting Rocky Horror? Was it an audition situation, or did they reach out to you because you're, of your musical background? I think they just sort of reached, I, I, they just offered me the part, oh, you know, wow. and, and Susan, they sort of offered... I think I think we went and met him once, and Susan had to sing "Happy Birthday." That's what she says. I don't remember <laughs> singing. I don't remember that. But uh, and um, uh, no, we we were sort of on, on the top of the list. 20th Century Fox just wanted two young American, clean cut, you know, people on the rise, you know, yeah. actors on the rise, and um, uh, and so we were just sort of offered the parts. The people in England who who had started it, right. uh, you know, it was a stage show in England for a couple of years before we did the movie, and um, I tell you, they they weren't happy with <laughs> with the, giving the two parts of the Americans to actual Americans, yeah. you know. Uh, but uh, the guy who played originally played Brad ended up being a big director and directing a lot of, of touring companies and shows uh, Rocky Horror all over the world. Oh. And um, uh, he was offered the part of Ralph Hapshat in the movie. <laughs> He turned it down. Wow. He didn't. If he couldn't, wasn't going to get Brad. He wasn't going to do a damn thing, you know. And uh, I, yeah, the uh, he was very good in the part. Apparently, I didn't see him on stage. I never did it on stage, but um, yeah. Were you familiar with Tim Curry before going into the film? 
Well, I had seen Tim do it on stage, uh, and and he just w was so spectacular and and so dynamic, and just ate up the space around him. And he made that he made that show, the stage show, so different. And uh, and so when they decided that they were going to do the film. They, the director Jim Sharman, uh, had had a, a decision to make, and then what was it was it was he going to get some big rock and roll stars, you know, Rolling Stones type of stars to play these parts, yeah. or was he going to? Uh, and if and if he was, they were going to give him, you know, ten times more money, uh, <laughs> more than the one point two million or something. Uh, and he, he was very loyal, and he cast the original people. You know, he cast Little Nell, and he cast uh, uh, Pat, uh, and he cast um, Tim, obviously, and um, and 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 Richard O'Brien, who wrote it and was riff rap. Uh, and uh, so they they there was a continuity, uh, and and so when I saw it on stage. It was it was so dynamic, and, and when it came to me, I said, well, "Of course, you know, I, who who wouldn't want to be in that?" You know, and I and uh, Meatloaf had done it on stage, I think, yeah, yeah. hadn't exactly. he? Yeah, yeah, and um, so I jumped at the chance. I jumped at the chance. Did you suspect it was going to be a cult hit? Obviously, not to the degree that it turned out to be, but did no. you think it would be a cult film? I didn't. I don't think cult films really existed that so much at the time. You know, those midnight movies were all so bizarre. You know, <laughs> at, at, at the time. You know, yeah. and uh, uh, the guy uh, from uh, 20th Century Fox who rediscovered and decided to take this movie uh, into the midnight circuits. Uh, uh, he uh, made a career for himself because he made a wise choice and was able to work it out. Um, but uh, it was, as, as it was, it was not, uh, I'm going to take the mic down. And just... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, great. There we go. Uh, yeah, I didn't want the mic in my face. Uh, and what were we talking about? <laughs> about uh, the midnight movie circuit. Oh, the midnight movie circuit. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then when it hit New York, and, 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 it, and it was um, embraced, by the gay community, first off, you know, and then and then just grew, and then all of a sudden, the, the truck drivers from Staten Island, you know, were wearing uh, uh, you know, bustiers and uh, fishnet <laughs> stockings on Eighth Street, Eighth uh, Avenue, Eighth Street, and um, and it just took off from there, you know. And what did I think it was going to be? No. 48 years later that I'd be sitting here talking about this, you know, thing? No, no, no. It's, uh, but our third generation now, and, and they, it's unexplainable to me. You know, it's really, it's unexplainable. Susan Sarandon once said, she said, uh, she said, don't try to, don't try to explain it. You know, don't try to come up with why. Yeah. You know, it's it's just it is. It did. It was. It will be forever. <laughs> Something. There's just some magic to it that that it's. Um, I mean, I have a lot of reasons, a lot of answers to that question of, well, of why it's still still around. You know, <laughs> but uh, it really it's basically a movie about the loss of innocence, and and it's about this really crazy screwed up guy. You know, and and uh, uh, everybody in the movie loses their innocence at some point, and in fact, that's why it became sort of a passage kind of movie. If you were twelve or thirteen or fourteen, and you had questions about your your own identity, or or you just you know you just wanted to see a different side of life, wow. you you would go to it. You know. Uh, or you'd sneak out of the house, you know, and, and, and don't tell your parents, you know, or, or you went to a, a friend's house for an overnight and, and they played the DVD, or not the, the VHS, uh, you know, from their, from their father's closet, you know, and, 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 and locked the door in, into the basement while they were watching it. Um, 
it uh, you know it's a it's a it's a it's a d depraved uh, <laughs> uh, it's a you know it's uh, it's there's a lot of things in that movie, you <laughs> know, and, and, and I think a lot of things in the movie uh, were invented uh, after the fact by the fans in terms of what some of the meaning was. You know, I mean, I, Richard O'Brien just was making a fairy tale. You know, he just thought he was just, he was sending up all of his... Um, remembrances of B movies and sci-fi movies and and just adding the twist of uh, you know the evil queen really like a Disney movie it's about an evil queen <laughs> right uh, very similar yeah yeah well Disney now owns it so well, that's true. Uh, yeah, good point. You know, they, they, they uh, yeah Okay. I'll we'll turn over to the Q&A in just a second, but I want to ask you quickly about uh, the experience of doing Spin City. Spin City. <clears throat> six, six of the best years of my life, i got to say. <laughs> um, Mike Fox was, uh, he's one of the smartest, talented young guys at the time, young guy. Uh, he... Uh, he put together a group of actors, I thought, that couldn't be bettered in, in that genre. You know, it was a kind of show that you could throw a storyline to any one of the six or seven people and they could carry the show. Yeah. You know, and, and there's not many shows that can do that, you know. Um, and, uh, uh, and I think that was, had a lot to do with why it, it stayed on for so long. And also, Mike had a, a, a great taste in women, you know. <laughs> so he would always like have some uh, young movie star or somebody uh, do a, a two or three episodes with him, yeah. you know. Uh, I got Farrah Fawcett for three episodes. That's not bad. No, it was great. <laughs> it was great, you know. And and um, yeah. But he, he always seemed to, he always had really beautiful, whether it was Heidi Klum, you know, or something like that, you know. Yeah. It, uh, and, then, and then we had Heather Locklear, who, right. was, who was, I thought, a really, un, um, she, was, she, she had great comedy chops, and they didn't give her enough to do in terms of comedy. And but what, when they did, she really delivered, um, and uh, and she wasn't bad to look at every day at work, uh, you know, and to rehearse with and to, uh, but um, the guys, you know, Alan Ruck, who's in Succession now, and uh, uh, you know, they, they they were all just so good. They were just so good. Do you uh, do a Richard Kind impression? Oh, Richard Kind? No, I don't. Do you do a Richard Kind? He's very loud and oh, it's, it's, yes, yes, yeah, he is. Yes, he's very and it's, it's hysterical. It's hysterical. <laughs> you know, uh, Richard Kind. God, now there's no, there's a one-off. I mean, that guy. You, if you want a Richard Kind type, you got to get Richard Kind. Absolutely. They're, you know, there's no except other. Except no substitutes. There's no substitutes for Richard Kind. You know, there's a, you can there's a lot of Barry Boswicks out there, and even Alan Rucks and some of those guys. You know, but no, no, Rich Richard Kind is, um, and he shows up everywhere. He, <laughs> he does. does. You know, he does every he does everything. You know, and after we did uh, Spin City, he wanted to go and do Broadway, and so he went and and did the producers. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, with Alan Ruck, actually, yeah. Alan Ruck, and they did the producers, and I, I I'd already had my sort of Broadway thing, so I said, well, wh why are you doing that? Why, you know, <laughs> but everybody, every actor, you know, wants to do a Broadway show. I guess I, yeah. I had I had done my Broadway year, ten years, you know, in the seventies, and. Yeah. Uh, uh, I didn't want to uh, go through all of that anxiety and uh, or working that hard ever again. Yeah. You know, that's fair. Unfortunately, I went back and did one in the '90s called uh, Nick and Nora. Uh, it was a 
based on the Thin Man movies, it was a musical, and we lasted uh, 10 days. Uh, <laughs> uh, and and, and it, it, it soured me forever going back on stage. I didn't even want to do that, but my manager at the time said, no, you got to do this. You'll, you, you'll have a great time. And I had a horrible time. <laughs> horrible time. Uh, we were in previews uh, on Broadway, because we didn't go out of town for over two months, and we were rehearsing every day, Changing, putting new songs in, taking them out. Uh, and uh, we were like the talk of the town for that two months um, because people would see it and go, well, that's a piece of crap. You know, that's, uh, oh, no, I really liked it this week, you know. Or, uh, you know, and then we finally, and then we were all getting rehearsal pay for the two months that we were actually performing it. And then we opened and we finally got some money. And then we closed 10 days later. <laughs> so I hated the whole, the whole time period. Thank you for, I brought it up. You did bring I it did, up. I, you didn't even give me a I, chance. I just, oh, yeah, I just, right I, I, I just, it. yeah, I, no, I just wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to recall the pain of, uh, you know. Was I, it at least cathartic? Oh, it was, uh, yeah, I feel much better now. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't. I, I, I uh, you know, it was one of those jobs, I don't know, everybody has this job in their life where you're doing the job and then when the day is over and you're walking out of the door and you go, oh, thank God, that's over, <laughs> you know, and now this is the best part of my day was <laughs> walking out of the stage door at night, you know. Uh, Not a great sign. I, I, and now I'm very depressed. We should start taking questions from the audience. Oh, then, oh yeah, let's see. Let's say, <laughs> uh, yeah, you're standing there because you have a question? Because you want the Megaforce picture. <laughs> I know, I know. I... Maybe, maybe the other one. Uh, no, okay. <laughs> yeah. So right. <laughs> my question is, did you always know or was there at some point in your life where you had to just know and accept in your heart that you were going to be the asshole? The asshole. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, no, uh, I've, I've, well, yeah, I've always thought of myself sort of as an asshole. Uh, but it, it's, it's thanks to you and uh, people like you uh, who decided to, uh, you know, yell that at me. Uh, and thank God I wasn't there when it first was yelled at me. Uh, and now I relish it. I relish my assholiness. Okay? okay. Thank you. Do people still recognize you on the streets and call you that? Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. They do, and it. Um, uh, it. it, it I'm very proud of that. <laughs> Does it you ever know? throw you off? You're just like walking down the road. No, no, no. It. It's. It's. Um, it's acceptable. You know, in 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 a. In this society, it's it is actually the probably the least offensive thing that people are saying these days about other people, right? Fair enough. Well, huge fan. My question was if you would sing for us. Would I sing for you? Uh, Once in a while, she don't want to call you. That's a song that was cut from Rocky Horror Picture Show. There you go. Thank you very much. It was the wrong song at the wrong time in the movie, once in a while. And they, but they, they do it on the stage version, and it, and it just slows the whole damn thing down. Uh, it, it always did. I, we, we, we filmed it, but they, they didn't put it in the movie. But I think you can see it on a Blu-ray now or something. Yeah, I think you can see it. And um, once in a while, yes. Hi. Uh, played Brad in Shadowcast many times. So you played Brad in the Shadowcast. Yes, in, in multiple Why? Shadowcasts. Because I had nothing else to do on Saturday night. Nothing fun. to do. You couldn't it have played Riff Raff, or you couldn't I have played play Janet. Riff Raff and the criminologist and. Dr. Did you ever Scott. play Janet? No. 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 I wasn't built some, for it. There's some of the time. greatest Janets have been men, and some of the greatest Brads have been women. I was very young and not quite that confident. I think at the oh, time. Oh no. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't quite there. Uh, I do have two questions for you. Sure. One is just a yes/no question. Do you want me to fix that chair so you have a footrest and the little thing up on the side so you're not reaching for your mug and can sit comfortably? <laughs> you and know, you're a very observant human being. I, I, yeah, you know? I fix problems for a living. But do, my other question is: yeah. 
Rocky should never be rebooted, remade. It should be left as it is. But yes. God forbid, if they do, do you have any personal feelings on who you think would be good in various roles recast, alive or dead? Hmm. No. No thoughts? <laughs> Fair. Uh, no, I died because I, I, no. I, I, because it's just, you know, they did the Fox version of it, you know. And yeah. nobody really liked it. Yeah. Uh, some of the fans liked it. Uh, the head of the fan club, uh, Larry Weisel, liked it. And he and I have argued about this for years. Um, and uh, there are some good performances in that, you know. But it, it was just an over-the-top, try, trying to be so spectacular. And, and, and uh, I was just, I was glad to see Tim did it. You know, he added a a bit of a, a bit of charm to it. I thought, yeah. but um, no. I who who would play Frankenfurter these days? Well, I mean, live or dead, I could potentially see David Bowie doing it. David Bowie. Oh yeah. I mean, sure he you was back then. Back I'm then, sure he yeah, was one anytime, of any time, any place, any universe. Yeah. I could see him doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm at a loss. Like, who would you replace you with? Oh, me? Yeah. Anybody. <laughs> anybody, yeah, could, no, anybody could play Brad. Just Any so asshole could as, play Brad? What's that? Any asshole could play Brad? Any asshole yeah. can yeah. play Brad, Fair. you know. Uh, it, uh, you, you just have to, you have to, um, um, yeah, you just have to take it serious. You know, you can't, you can't get jokey with it. Yeah. And that's been the problem with the show when you see it on stage these days. It becomes like a big cartoon. And it loses its danger. You know, it's a it's a pretty screwed up script. <laughs> a little you bit. know, I mean, look, I mean, yeah. you know. Do you want me to fix the chair? I, I no, thank you. I don't I don't plan on sitting down again. Okay. But thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. You must have some crazy stories from working on the set of Rocky Horror. Could you? Share a few I, I, of those with crazy us? stories from what? From working on the set of Rocky Horror. Oh, could, from the set of Rocky yeah, Horror. Could, could you, you know, share? people ask me, you know, do you have a f funny story? And I have no funny stories. <laughs> uh, it was, it was, uh, it was so hard. It, I was wet the whole time. We were, we were. It was miserable. It was, it was. Uh, we did it so quick. You know, and uh, we were in a sound stage that wasn't heated, and there were no toilets. Uh, you had to go into another whole building somewhere, you know, and um, and the swimming pool was not heated, uh, and uh, uh, I loved every minute of it, <laughs> you know. But uh, in, in retrospect, um, I um, I probably the time that Susan and I were stripped down and they made. Uh, uh, plaster casts of our bodies, you know, because there was our statues, you know, and, and, and to see the, the, the British uh, stagehands uh, with their hands all over uh, Susan Sarandon, uh, half naked, um, I, that I will carry that image with me for the rest of my life. Thank you. Yeah. And, and do you have kids? Do I have kids? Yeah, I have a son who just got his uh, master's at Cambridge in physics. And a daughter who just got her master's uh, at Colorado State, who's uh, starting a veterinary school next month. And, uh, and I just uh, stand on a mark and, and uh, say lines and, uh, you know, and, and kiss people uh, occasionally. I was, just, I was just wondering what age you allowed them to see the movie and what... Oh, you know, they, they were you. probably uh, Chelsea, our daughter, who's now 26. She probably saw it. I think her friend saw it before she did, and they would talk about it. And uh, I, 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 I don't think that she really wanted to see her dad in fishnet stockings <laughs> and high heels, you know. Uh, but. Um, but my son, he's he loves it. He he's they they are wherever last October or last Halloween in in England, uh, 
he called me, FaceTimed me, and on a TV behind him was Rocky Horror, and he had all of his friends around him, you know, and so he was, he's very proud of the fact that I made no money. <laughs> you know. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, so I was wondering, like, what was your favorite, like, set or, like, prop that you got to film with on Rocky Horror? Oh, that's an interesting question. Huh. I don't know. Let's see. The interesting thing. Maybe a prop. The, uh, I liked the car. I, I, and I, I, because I eventually bought something like that, that car, you know, and, um, um, That's a tough question. I've never been asked that question before. I, I thought somebody would have asked that before. <laughs> no, the, but again, it's you're asking me what was my favorite prop or like, or set or like or set or like thing to film with. Things to hair. film with. I uh, probably the 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 bedroom scene, right? <laughs> you know, what are you shaking your head for? <laughs> you, you know, you said you. I've, I've seen it thirty-five times. Thirty-five times. <laughs> How old are you? Fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? You're fourteen, yes. and you've seen it thirty-five times. Well, I'm turning fifteen in July. But. Okay, fifteen in July. Oh, that makes all the difference in the world. <laughs> I know. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, are, are these your parents here? No, my, my mother left me here. Your mother left you here, and I wonder why. <laughs> my God. And, uh, yeah, no, it was it was the bedroom scene. Okay, now sit down. I don't want to talk to a fourteen-year-old about Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah. Hi. Um. So you you were in the uh, pilot episode for the the series Lex, and I was Lex. Yes, yes. I was wondering if you uh, if you just had any any memorable thoughts of the of filming that episode, uh, and why was it your wardrobe? What? You know what? That yeah, I was in a a metal skirt, if I remember, in yes. that, because I have a picture of it that I have at my table here on my, from Lex, and it's it's amazing that the people who remember that I I did one right two hour movie and then Tim Curry did one after me, didn't he, uh, or before yeah. me? I think he was he was after you. Yeah. After me, yeah. of course he was after me. <laughs> the uh, and then it went to series, right? And yes. but but yeah. we we were just were. I just remember doing it, uh, it was in uh, Nova Scotia, I think, right? And uh, we got there and we went on to the soundstage and everything was done in this one big soundstage. They did all the mixing and they did all the effects and everything. I never saw the light of day. <laughs> I would, you know, I would wake up in dark, go to there in dark, leave there in dark, you know, and it was sort of a dark film in a way, you know, but uh, it, it was um, uh, Lex. It was, um, I had, all I remember is the metal skirt. <laughs> I, I, I had a metal skirt and, and a sort of a cool hairdo. Um, yeah, uh, was, I, was I supposed to answer a question? Just, just, I just wanted your thoughts on it. That was my thought. My thought is that it was dark. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It was dark. Thank you. Hello. Hello. I have a two, two, two quick questions. Two quick questions. Have you ever snuck into a midnight showing of Rocky Horror and watch everyone have so much fun? Well, I have, didn't have to. I didn't sneak in, but uh, the Tiffany Theater in L.A. years ago. Uh, they had me come down, and this was after the, the Shadowcast had started, <clears throat> and, they, and I, it was for the first time I probably had seen the whole thing going on, with the, the whole action. Uh, and then they brought me up on stage, and, and they presented me with a gold record, because we had just gone gold, uh, you know, a soundtrack. And uh, I presented them uh, with a framed pair of my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> and it gave me the whole idea since then that I'm now at these conventions, a few that I do, I sell my underwear. Oh my God. Yeah, I know, That's cool. huh? That's cool. Well, I, it's, why not? <laughs> why not? And there are not a lot of actors who can actually sell their underwear. <laughs> Legitimately, you know, and not be too creepy yes. about it. Yes. You know? Well, what a very 
great theater back home in Norfolk, Norfolk right here in Virginia. Um, it's old school theater. With yep. the balcony and it's really wonderful. They show Rocky Horror almost every weekend, midnight. And, still do. And yes, yeah, still do. Yes. Most of those theaters have closed down. Oh no, this one does very well, and it's because of Rocky Horror. Because of Rocky because Horror. Because of Rocky Horror, it does very well. Really? The narrow. But my God. My second part is I'm going to request something from you. Could you please say, "Damn it, Janet," for me? Oh. Mm. So you're saying, what was my favorite prop? In the <laughs> Damn it, Janet. No, that's not quite no, right. No, Hold on. <laughs> Damn it, Janet. No, that's not quite right. Um, they, everybody, I, on the count of three, say it. OK, one, two, three. Damn it, Janet. Yeah, see, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> it, it, it had the, it, yeah, it had the, the angst behind it, right? <laughs> Yeah, no, I've lost my angst. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I actually have a pair of your framed underwear in my house. Oh, you uh, do? <laughs> weird oh. thing to say to somebody. Um, it, it's a, it's a it, conversation starter, right. isn't it? <laughs> um, they were actually on the head of another actor at Comic-Con a few years ago. Um, I told him to do that. Yeah, I know you did. Yeah. I know. I said, you thought you were going to buy my underwear? You have to wear them on your head the right. whole time. Um, my question isn't actually about Rocky. You, have you heard or do you have any news of a Helen Keller versus the Night Wolves 2? What about Helen Keller versus the When's the sequel coming? Oh, there won't be. There, <laughs> there, 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 no, no, not the Helen Keller uh, versus Night Wolves. There might be one for uh, FDR American Badass. Uh, which was sort of uh, Helen Keller was the was the uh, after that, and it um, if you haven't seen FDR American Badass, it is one of the funniest films that uh, and rude. I only seem to be doing rude things in my in my career, uh, but FDR American Badass, yeah, it, 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 written by the same guy, you know, you. and he. Um, He's, he's as rude as his movies. Yeah. Very talented, though. Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon. Good to meet you. Hi. Um, so you had a profound impact on my young, my young life. And it's not necessarily as, as profound as a 14-year-old. But <laughs> in 82, you did this massive, tremendous movie, Megaforce. Megaforce. What are your best thoughts of it because you know to this day I have friends that we still talk about the glory of that movie you know what Megaforce Megaforce it was uh, like a G.I. Joe movie before G.I. Joe right I mean it was uh, um, uh, Hal Needham directed it who did all those smoky bandit thingies you know kind of movies uh, and uh, he is uh, this was one of his last films and he, he was the biggest stunt guy in Hollywood. You know, I mean, he did all the big stunt uh, movies. And, um, uh, and, and Megaforce was basically just all stunts. I mean, motorcycles flying and this and that. Uh, and he didn't have, we actually were writing the script in the car on the way to the set, this, on the way to this, you know, to the set every day. Uh, so a lot of those lines, you know, uh, we came up with, uh, uh, you know, after a drunken night in Las Vegas. Uh, and, uh, uh, but Megaforce is, um, we're just, we're just finishing a documentary on the making of Megaforce and the guy, Who's, who directed it and producing it uh, has collected a lot of the original uh, vehicles from it, the, wow. the few that are, are still out there. And he just sent me a picture of the TACCOM, which was the big <laughs> thing that Hal Needham actually was in. The, the, when you, the kind, it was the vehicle that... Like that the command. The commander, command. the command vehicle, right? And, uh, and he, just, he just found this TACCOM in a swamp in in Canada, and he just brought it down to uh, in Washington where he lived, and um, and he's redoing that. He's got a couple of the dune buggy things, whatever they're called, and he's got my original motorcycle, my original helmet. He's got everything that could ever be collected, probably from 
from Megaforce, and he's making, and we're making this this documentary, and, and, and we're calling it the documentary that nobody was asking for. <laughs> uh, well, there'll be there'll be at least one viewer. There'll be one viewer, it, but Two. you know, it's it, it's a really it's a really good movie because it's about something other than Megaforce. It's it's about sort of like what you probably experienced at a young age, you know. I, I mean, it was about good and bad, and it was very clean clean and clear what the theme was, you know, and probably you saw it with a parent, and there, and there is some, you know, there is some connection there with a father or uh, something that you could, uh, you know, really carry through your life, and uh, because there wasn't, it was a year, there wasn't a lot of things that were that clean and, and clear, you know, there was, in terms of movies, uh, and um, so this documentary is about this fellow who w was wanted to meet his hero, my, me, my, my character, you know. And, and, uh, and, and we get into this whole thing of, of, of why and what it meant to him. And, uh, and consequently, he, he interviewed everybody who's still alive in, in, uh, that was involved with the movie. And so it not only is it a, a, a really well researched and you know just from the standpoint of facts and figures, but it's it's not just about that. You know, it's it's about I think you're saying what you're saying. Felt, yeah. You thank know you. that it was meaningful yeah. to him. Thank you very much for that. It thank helped you. Help my young childhood. So. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hi. Um, actually, the first time I watched Rocky Horror Picture Show was like last year, and it was for a class, and I have to take a quiz on it. <laughs> Seven out of ten. But yeah. Seven um, out of ten? <laughs> You yeah. would mean you gave it a seven out of ten? No, no, I no. meant um, the grade I got on that quiz. <laughs> oh, you it, you got seven out of ten. Yeah. What were the three that you missed? I forgot. It was from last year. Oh, it was the last year. Okay. <laughs> so, um, this is somewhat a basic question, but yeah. like, if you go to a convention, um, who would you go to a Q and A for, and why? Who would I go to a Q and A for? Yeah. I'd probably go to John Barrowman's uh, Q&A, oh, yeah. only because he usually comes out in a dress, <laughs> right? And, and he's uh, so entertaining. Uh, I'd like to see John Cleese's uh, this, this weekend. Um, and um, uh, Shatner's always very entertaining, you know? Um, I, uh, when I've done these things in the past with the girl, with the, uh, Patricia Quinn and Little Nell, the three of us, and Meatloaf, will be up here, and those, those are hilarious, because there's four very distinct personalities on that stage, and, uh, and you, and you understand, uh, how the movie was able to use our, all of our personalities in a very, constructive and entertaining way. Yeah, thank you. So go see John Cleese's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm not that tall. Um, <laughs> so I guess my question is, have you ever had the chance to experience Rocky Horror internationally? And the reason I ask is because I actually went to high school in Vienna, Austria. I went to the American International School there. And Rocky Horror came to Vienna, which is a very conservative city, especially back in the 80s. Yeah. Right? And um, we went to the midnight showing. And the entire time, we were being the American kids, having fun with it. And the Viennese would turn around and go, shh. Oh, shh. <laughs> yeah, no, they didn't get it. Yeah, no. and, and it was hilarious to us. Have you ever had the opportunity to, ex to experience I, I international? I, no, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen the movie. I mean, and I know that the... The, when the play is done, when the musical is done on stage, all over the world, you know, it, they've gotten to the point where the actors have to respond to the audience as if the audience thinks that they're at a movie, uh -huh. you know, and they'll yell stuff at the actors on a stage, and the actors actually have to rehearse their comebacks, you know, and their and their snide remarks, you know, uh, and. Um, uh, I, I would, I'm reading a book called Still the Beast is Feeding or something, 40 Years of Rocky Horror. 
And I had forgotten just how many productions of the actual stage show there have been all over the world and, uh, and continue to be. There's a big one going on in England now. And um, um, the, the different interpretations of some of the main characters, um, I, you know, I'm just small potatoes in terms of the, the, the legs that this movie, that this show has had, I mean, that the actual play musical has had and, and the effect that it's had all over the world. And um, uh, I, I wouldn't want to do it on stage right now, you know, with people yelling at me. Um, uh, I, I wouldn't know what to, I would, it would hurt my feelings. <laughs> you know, I just just like you guys called me an asshole early. I'll I'll never I'll never live that down. You know, no, I'd say. Uh, thank you. But thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, I didn't have a question so much as I wanted to let you know that I'm from Myrtle Beach and we have our own Rocky Horror troupe called Plan B. Plan B. Yep, and uh, we love you dearly. And uh, I wanted to thank you for your existence and all that you do. Oh, well, thank you. My God, that's so sweet. I love the, the shadow cast that have taken this to their hearts, you know, and, and uh, given them something to do on the weekends. You yeah, know? I, I play Frankenfurter. You play Frankenfurter. Oh, my God. I, I, that's such, I always wanted to play Frankenfurter rather than just play with Frankenfurter in right. the movie, you know. Uh, uh, but, uh, oh, I bet you you're a wonderful Frankenfurter. I do kick ass, yes. You do say that. Of course you do. Uh, well, I, I hope you guys have a long and prosperous, uh, you know, life with Rocky. Keep it alive. It, it's uh, 48, 48th year or something, and uh, mm -hmm. maybe I'll do, uh, next October, I'm going to probably do a little tour where I'll go out and uh, with the shadow casts around the country, you know, and, and we, we uh, get a local shadow cast to do it, and we do the screening, and then I'll introduce it, and similar to what I'm going to do tomorrow night here, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, with, with the shadow cast here, which is excellent. Uh, yeah, we'd love to have you. We're, we're a charity company, too, non-denominational. So, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Have fun. Thanks. You have a lovely day. Thank you. You, too. Actually, we have time for one more. So One more. Thank you so much. Yes. Hi. Um, I'm Aviva. This is my brother, Ari, and he had a question. Okay. What movie did you like making the most? Did I like making the most? I, I, I probably have to say uh, a Rocky Horror Picture Show, uh -huh. only because of, of how it's affected people over the years and how it's changed people's lives and, and how I, I can still go to uh, you know, these conventions occasionally and sell my underwear. <laughs> you know, it, uh, it, but thank you for the question. Oh, thank you so much. Thank Very you. nice to meet you. <laughs> Yo, okay. Thank you. Um, I think that uh, I, I have two pictures here, um, and uh, I think that I have to give the uh, the Megaforce uh, picture to. Uh, where's my Megaforce guy? <laughs> yeah, you were the one who, who you, him, you, you were up here, and you were telling me about it, your childhood. Yeah, here, take this. <laughs> this is this is this is for you because. This is uh, thank you, thank you, and uh, and uh, of course the, the Rocky Horror one has to go to the fourteen-year-old. Uh, <laughs> thank you all for coming out here today.